The press called it an upgrade. They were wrong. What BYD just revealed isn't an improvement. It's a kill shot. The next generation blade battery doesn't just charge faster, cost less, and last longer. It flips the global power dynamic in one silent, stunning move. And Tesla? Obliterated in less than 30 minutes. BYD didn't just rewrite the rules. It shattered them. The West is scrambling. Investors are in freefall. And Elon Musk? He just got a brutal reminder of how you lose a crown. Not by collapse, but by being out-engineered. This isn't an evolution of battery tech. It's a replacement, a new standard, a new threat. So the question now is, when your rival is faster, cheaper, and safer, what do you have left? What's happening? Electric vehicle makers had been stuck with the same devil's bargain. Use high-density batteries made from nickel and cobalt, or risk irrelevance. These materials allowed for greater range and performance, but they came with terrifying risks. Fires, explosions, soaring prices, and devastating ethical concerns tied to mining practices in places like the Democratic Republic of Congo. Tesla embraced these chemistries. So did Volkswagen, so did General Motors. And for a while, that gamble paid off. Their vehicles went farther. Their acceleration times got headlines. But beneath the surface, the cracks were forming literal and metaphorical. BYD chose a different path, and they chose it years ago. When BYD debuted the original Blade battery in 2020, it was already a breakthrough. It passed the infamous nail penetration test without combusting. It withstood crushing force. It held up to high heat. Engineers at competing firms whispered about it in disbelief, but this new generation takes it even further. The chemistry has been refined for maximum efficiency. The structure of the cell has been redesigned to reduce internal resistance. Heat generation has been cut. Charging speed has been doubled. And most critically, none of this came at the cost of safety. This is not just good science. It's a declaration of independence. By moving away from nickel and cobalt, BYD broke free from one of the most volatile and exploitative supply chains in the tech world. While Tesla continues to navigate price spikes and geopolitical instability in its material sourcing, BYD controls its costs, its materials, and its production timeline. And that's when the numbers started making people nervous. Really nervous. If this caught your attention, hit subscribe. We're just getting started. It wasn't just a technical achievement. It was a psychological one. The idea that a passenger vehicle could accept a one megawatt charge bordered on science fiction until BYD made it science fact. Charging speed has always been one of the biggest pain points for EV adoption. Consumers are used to spending five minutes at a gas pump. Ask them to wait 45 minutes for a charge, and many walk away. Tesla's supercharger network helped, but the reality is most fast charging systems max out well below 300 kilowatts. Even with improvements, EV charging has felt like a compromise. Not anymore. BYD's next-gen blade battery can go from 30% to 80% in under 30 minutes. That alone would be impressive. But the true magic is how it does it, with almost no heat. This isn't just about speed, it's about efficiency. Most batteries lose energy in the form of heat during charging. That heat stresses the battery, shortens its life, and requires complex cooling systems that add cost and weight. But BYD's design reduces heat at the source. By re-engineering the internal structure of the cell, they've managed to minimize resistance, distribute current more evenly, and eliminate bottlenecks. This isn't about patching a problem. It's about erasing the need for the patch entirely. Because the truth is, while Elon Musk talked about LFP, BYD had already made it the core of their empire. Tesla knew, but couldn't move fast enough. Elon Musk knew LFP was the future. He said it in interviews. He tweeted about it. He even began using LFP batteries in the standard range versions of the Model 3 and Model Y. But Tesla didn't make its own LFP cells. It had to source them from China. And that meant dependence. It meant vulnerability. It meant being one step behind. That meant fewer factory contracts, fewer component orders, and fewer job. Especially in the sprawling Tier 2 and Tier 3 supplier networks that support the legacy car industry. The United Auto Workers' leadership sounded the alarm. 
They accuse domestic automakers of failing to secure the workforce before transitioning to electric. But in private, they admitted the real problem wasn't Detroit, it was Shenzhen. How do you negotiate labor protections against a company that builds its own batteries, mines its own materials, and doesn't need your supply chain? Job displacement rippled across multiple industries. Tool and dye shops lost contracts. Midwest assembly plants paused expansion. Logistics companies that once specialized in moving internal combustion components saw their volumes plummet. And still, BYD kept growing, quietly setting up design studios and battery labs in places like Europe and Brazil, completely bypassing traditional American industrial zones. This wasn't offshoring. This was something deeper. Labor irrelevance in the face of systemic transformation. American workers had been promised a green future full of opportunity, but now the opportunity was arriving, and it had Chinese characters printed on the side. As workers protested and politicians postured, a far more uncomfortable truth came into focus. This wasn't about EVs anymore. It was about power itself, power redefined. For over a century, power in the global economy was defined by oil, steel, and silicon. Wars were fought over barrels, trade routes, and megabytes. But now a different kind of power is emerging, the power to manufacture the future itself. BYD's twin moves, the next generation blade battery and the first mass market flying car, aren't just tech innovations. They are signals. Signals that the next technological revolution will not be led from Silicon Valley. It will not be headquartered in Austin or controlled by Wall Street. It will be designed, built, and exported from China. This isn't a shift, it's a handover. Because when you control the battery, you control the supply chain. When you control the software, you control the data. When you control the energy system that moves people, products, and infrastructure, you don't just win a market. You redefine the rules. Tesla may have built the myth, but BYD built the machine. What's happening now is not a competition between car companies. It's a battle between technological civilizations, one that optimizes for vertical integration, long-term planning, and affordability, the other for branding, investor sentiment, and speculative innovation. And in that contrast, the global balance of power is shifting, quietly, steadily, and maybe permanently. The future isn't coming, it's already here. While others are still talking, BYD is building. Faster batteries, flying cars, total control. This isn't a shift, it's a takeover. What do you think? Is Tesla falling behind or is there still time to catch up? Let us know in the comments. And if you're into deep dives like this, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications.